Well, how you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a quick look at Madam Web. This was directed by S.J. Clarkson and stars Dakota Johnson, Tahar Rahim, and Adam Scott. Johnson plays Cassandra Webb, an EMT who one day gets hit with some deja vu. She realizes she suddenly has the power to see horrible things happening before they actually happen. These powers come from her mother getting bit by a rare Peruvian spider while she was pregnant. It happens. And if that wasn't enough, through a wacky turn of events, she suddenly finds herself having to look after three high school girls who are being hunted by Ezekiel Sims, played by Raheem. He's hunting them because he too has seen a vision of the future, and in that vision, they kill his ass. So he's trying to kill them first. As I'm sure most of you are aware, Sony has not had a whole lot of luck with the Spider-Man movies that don't directly involve Spider-Man. Yeah, the first Venom was fine, but since then, they've been kinda crap. And sadly, Madam Web is no different. It's hardly the worst movie I've ever seen, but it's not good. And this bad movie has been accompanied by some bad takes about why it failed. I see a whole lot of people talking about superhero fatigue, which may be partly true, but people who harp on that tend to overlook the fact that it's not just superhero movies that aren't doing well right now. Also, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and Across the Spider-Verse, both superhero movies, did very well last year. I don't think the problem is necessarily that people are tired of superhero movies, but more that they're tired of half-assed superhero movies. I've also seen people blame the fact that this is a movie with primarily a female cast, which... How is that still an argument? I've been hearing this bullshit argument since Catwoman. Oh, people don't want women in their superhero movies. No, no, that wasn't the problem. The problem was the movie sucked. How much money did Wonder Woman make? How much money did Captain Marvel make? Not a superhero movie, but still a female-led movie, Barbie. That made bank. Can we please stop blaming the women? They are not the problem here. This movie failed for one reason and one reason only. Because we all saw the trailer and thought, wow, that looks like shit. And we were right. This movie featured the screenwriting duo of Matt Sazama and Burke Sharpless. And I really have to wonder why they keep finding work. They have written so many movies, and the best screenplay they have written so far is Dracula Untold, and that is a problem. The movies they make are not good, they are not successful, I don't know who they have dirt on, or who they are related to, or who they are sleeping with, maybe it's some combination of the three, I don't know. In any case, this script is laughably bad. Most of the people in this movie that we are supposed to root for are either stupid, or sociopaths, or sometimes both. We start out with Cassandra Webb and Ben Parker as EMTs who are rushing someone to the hospital, and in the process they come this close to running over Maddie Franklin, played by Cassandra O'Connor, and it's her own damn fault for skateboarding in traffic, and then she flips him off and Cassandra is like, who flips off an ambulance? And you know what? That's a very good question. Who the hell does that? And after all that, while they're having a cup of coffee in the hospital, a nurse runs up and tells them, good news, the patient is going to be okay. And they could not care less. And then the patient's daughter brings them this cute little crayon drawing, and they're both acting super awkward about it, like, you take it. No, you take it. No, I don't want it. I don't want it either. What the hell is wrong with you? Just take the stupid crayon drawing. And then she's like, I can barely fold this. It's like cardboard. And I'm like, it's construction paper. It'll fold. We're only a few minutes into the movie, and already I hate both of these people so much. And the damnedest thing is, one of them is Ben Parker, played by Adam Scott, who is eventually going to be the one who raises young Peter Parker. This has to be the only time I've ever actually wanted Uncle Ben to die. And then we have Ezekiel Sims, who has a vision where, in the future, he is murdered by three spider women, so he puts a plan into action to find them. This plan involves poisoning a woman who works for the NSA, and then forcing her to give up her codes in exchange for the antidotes, and then after she gives up the codes, he just lets her die anyway. And in this movie, which takes place in 2003, by the way, he is somehow able to perfectly recreate headshots of all three girls in the computer just completely from his memory. I don't know how that works. And then this NSA system can somehow de-age and de-mask them and show them perfect pictures of what they look like now. And the system can immediately alert them the moment one of them passes in front of any security camera in New York. 
That kind of technology didn't exist in 2003. I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist now. And remember, he is using a dead woman's access codes to use this system, and I find it very interesting that it is advanced enough that it can immediately flag a specific person when they pass in front of a camera, but it is not sophisticated enough to lock his ass out when they realize he is using a dead woman's access codes from an unrecognized IP address. Come on. And then getting back to Cassandra, at one point she is wanted by the NYPD for abducting the three girls that she is trying to keep safe from Ezekiel Sims. The reason behind this is stupid. And despite being wanted by the NYPD, she basically spends most of the movie driving around in a stolen taxi and somehow never gets caught. She's also able to leave and re-enter the country with no trouble whatsoever. Where was this NSA detection system then? Also, the NYPD is apparently after her, though not putting too much effort in finding her, clearly, but at no point are they after Ezekiel Sims, who actually kills several police officers. I'm pretty sure the NYPD would prioritize finding a cop killer over some random woman. There's also this weird thing where the movie refuses to mention certain characters' names and makes a really big deal out of it. Early on, Ben mentions that he's dating someone new, presumably May, and Cassandra asks what her name is, and he immediately clams up and just refuses to tell her for no reason whatsoever. Then later on, during Mary Parker's baby shower, they play a game where they all have to try to guess the baby's name, which no one does. They mention several names other than Peter, and at no point in the movie do they actually mention Peter's name, even when he's born. The only thing I can figure is there must have been some kind of weird licensing issue with Marvel that prevented them from naming either May or Peter, but there are ways around that that are less stupid than this. The dialogue in this movie is god-awful. I really have to wonder if anyone who worked on the script has ever spoken to an actual human being in their lives. When Ben Parker arrives at the baby shower, for example, Mary walks up to him and says something like, Hi, I'm Mary Parker, your sister-in-law. And I'm like, that's a weird way to introduce yourself to a family member. Of course, the audience needs to know how you two are related, but it's probably safe to assume you two already know how you're related. You don't need to state it out loud. This is right along the same lines of, as you know. This also raises an interesting question. How is this their first meeting? Did Ben not attend his brother's wedding? Actually, this version of Ben is kind of a dick, so you know what? He probably didn't. And based on what we've seen in the trailer, you might go into this movie expecting to see the three spider women suit up. You don't. The only time they appear is in a dream sequence. And that is some bullshit. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I could go on and on about all the problems with this movie, but we will be here all day. Someday I may give this the full cinematic excrement treatment, but I dread that day because I fear that review is going to be like two hours long. Pretty much the only bright spots in this movie are the three Spider Women. Those actresses, Sydney Sweeney, Isabella Merced, and Celeste O'Connor, are very good. They are hampered by the fact that they have a terrible script to work with, but they still manage to shine regardless. They are pretty much the only ones that are doing a good job, however. Raheem is just a generic bad guy, Scott is playing the worst version of Ben Parker ever, and Johnson is just horribly miscast. She didn't even look like she wanted to be there, and honestly, I can't say I blame her. Overall, this movie kinda sucked, and the more I think about it, the more I dislike it. Terrible dialogue, nonsensical plot, I have no idea what the hell they were trying to do here. A movie that actually featured Madam Web and the Spider Women probably could have been a lot of fun, and I wish they had made that instead of this, and just taken this origin story and told a very condensed version in that movie. You've heard the saying, this meeting could have been an email? Well, this movie could have been a flashback. It's not worth seeing in theaters, it's not worth renting when it's available on BOD. Just don't bother. And that's all I have to say about Madam Web. Till next time, take care.